Hi, I'm Christy Lee, a DJ for WJTL Radio, and I'm so thrilled today to be talking to Pat Barrett. Hey, Pat, how are you? Well, I'm great. Thanks for having me. You are welcome. Um, you've got the, we both have a gray background, kind of. The, I, yeah, just the, I mean, I could, I, I found out too late that you could change the Zoom background to like being on the moon and like on a roller coaster. And I spent so many meetings only worrying about the background and how to change it to make people laugh. I was like, I think you just need to stick with a, just find the white wall. Don't be right. tempted, Pat. Yeah. <laughs> well, um, I do love the tiger wallpaper, by the way. I'm wearing my tiger, my tiger shirt. To, Let's just because go. I loved it so much. I've got a metronome in the background because I know you have that cool metronome too. So I want to be like Pat Barrett. I'm doing my very best. Oh my gosh. Well done. That was Thanks. brand new wallpaper too. Meg, oh. my wife, Meg found that. And I was like, this is perfect. We're going to be talking about Meg on the way in a little bit, all kinds of good stuff, uh, because I want to dig into Pat's new album just came out and, um, Man, there's so much, 17 tracks. There's so much good stuff to talk about. So it's called Act Justly, Love Mercy, Walk Humbly. And Pat, this is how I think about the album, right? So I think of it kind of like a, a big collage. It's so artistic. There's so many different kind of sounds like vintage music, modern, acoustic, kind of like it sounds like you're at home or in the studio. And then there's themes like there's Bible verses and hymns showing up in the lyrics love songs, kind of some social commentary, all, all kinds of stuff. And it's this really cool, in my mind, collage of um, all of these awesome things that we need right now. <laughs> so uh, talking about it after a year of COVID, uh, I don't know at what point we are in the storyline, but I think that there are some things on here that are really encouraging for people. So let's start at the beginning, just with the title track, Act Justly, Love, Mercy, Walk Humbly. That's a Bible verse, right? We all grow up and if you're right. in the church, you grow up Micah 6, 8. That's like literally my kindergartner's Bible verse from last week. So tell us oh, the yeah. story behind that song. Well, the story is there's not one original thought coming from this side of the screen, guys. <laughs> like I am like, I mean, I so for me, there's a, a few things. I've always, scripture has been so integrated not only into my well really into my life and it, of course it's come out in songs i grew up in the church i grew up around a lot of these verses my whole life and it was it's been really profound to me at this point this stage of my life three kids you know you're the things that you grew up around and sometimes you can be so familiar with something that you miss it yeah. You, you don't understand it or you haven't even lived enough life at that point for it to really sink in. And now as a 36 year old, I'm like, okay, these have always been powerful and have come full circle back into my life to, to have even deeper meaning than they had before. They always meant something profound. Right. But, but now it's like, wow, that, that carries on a whole different light. And it's not that the verses change. It's that I've changed. And there's so many things that have happened over the last two years. Like every song has been kind of a, I can see a timestamp in my mind. Like, oh, that was written this time. This is written this time. This is before the pandemic. This is like at, well into it, you know? And that song, that song, like how could you not have your worship and your devotion to God be informed? Like you said, the collage thing is really, I'm glad you caught that because that's why I named the album the way I did because they were song they were act justly songs and love mercy songs and walk humbly songs and for me it was letting the 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 deep reality set in that God cares about all of it and always has and our worship my worship over the last 2 years has reflected that and it's been so beautiful and challenging and difficult and you know, encouraging and confronting and all those, and in all those things, worshiping in communion with God has just flourished for me. It really is like it got real, you know, like, yeah, it's like we kind of, as, as believers needed to know, okay. And this is a real question. A lot, a lot of people were asking in the past year, uh, what am I supposed to do? 
<laughs> in all of this, what what's required of me would be like the fancy your Bible language of asking that question. Yeah. But God, how do you want me to act in this situation and to act justly, to love mercy, to walk humbly? Those are all game changers when you really do it. Oh, yeah. And I think what I love about it is it's not a new question. Like we all think we're like, the world's never been, this is a new idea. Like, what do I, what are we supposed to do? And even in that Micah verse, that is the question that God answers. Like what, what does God really care about? When Jesus was asked the same type of question, it was basically like teacher out of all, out of all the commandments. And there's like a lot of them, like what, and the font's like really small and there's like a lot of pages. A lot of pages. What, is, what is the most important thing? And Jesus said, love your neighbor as yourself. That's the second greatest. The first greatest is to love the Lord your God with all your heart, mind, soul, and strength. Like the whole song for me is a reminder to not get caught up in all the things that are not important. And for me, that's gosh, it's easy to just wake up in the morning and get swept into the flurry of emails and, you know, reactions to text messages you get. And, and it doesn't have to be that way. Yeah. Well said, Pat. That's really good. There's a lot of songs I'm thinking like, man, that goes in. We can talk about so real after that. We can talk about lightning after that. We can go for so many different ones. I just want to encourage people to listen to this, listen to the whole thing, because it all really plays together really well, as diverse as it is in different moments. Um, I, I do think I want to highlight the one lyric in the song, So Real, um, that religion's camera shy. True religion is, is camera shy. That's one I know. Um, Brooke from Hillsong, she, she posted that. People have been uh, getting into that song and really appreciating that lyric. Tell us a little bit about So Real. Yeah, that So Real is the song that makes me nervous. <laughs> and there's, there's a few things for me that, that, that hurt me about it. And some of it is truly when I read, when I read the scriptures and as a disciple of Jesus, like, it, when you read those words, they're not all flattery. They are very, they, they demand something of you and they confront certain ways of organizing your life and certain perspectives that, that you have. Like you can't read Jesus without being deeply confronted. And in, in our modern day and age for all the you know, the innovation and how connected we are to one another digitally. What has also flourished is a, is, is the, I'm going to call it an opportunity, but it's not the, you're incentivized to present a side of you. That's not who you really are. And I feel that tendency all the time, not just on Instagram or whatever. That's like the lowest of the, it's more in your, in your life. Like Jesus invites us to live a real, I don't want to use the word real. I'm going to say, use the word honest and vulnerable, uncovered life with him. And that's where the beauty actually takes, takes place. And I, I, hear the old words of Jesus say, hey, there's going to be a tendency for you, especially you religious people, like you want, you're going to want to stand up, you're going to pray these long, lengthy prayers, and you're, you're going to want to like do good things to be seen by other people. So that's, that's there. And what I'm, what I want to tell you what's better Instead, go into your room and pray where no one can hear you or see you. You know, read your Bible and pray without like putting it on the gram and try going for likes. Like your father that sees what's done is in secret. Like that's where real relationship 
happens. And gosh, I mean, that, that for me, what you think it's a modern problem. It's not, it's a very old problem. People have been doing this for thousands of years, like presenting sides of them that they're not. And that song for me is confronting that tendency in myself and inviting God into it. That's awesome. I love that you say that it's not a new problem because it's not, it's not just because the internet was invented. There've been platforms forever. Somebody oh, found yeah. one, they did the same thing <laughs> and in the church. So yep. what a great encouragement and, and what a great perspective. I, I love that. That's so good. Uh, I want to talk a little bit about, I mean, I got like post-its and songs and all kinds of stuff. I want to go to some of the ones that are family related, right? Cause Pat's a, his parent. He's a husband and some of these songs work so well. We're going to get to the love song on the project. This is a good one, but let's talk about as for me. Right. Uh, and I think this is so good. Like think of it after we've been in this COVID season for a year, we've been stuck in our houses for a year. You talk about plastering things on the wall in a house in this song, and it just feels more relatable than ever. So tell us a little bit about this song as for me. Yeah. Again, just a Bible verse, just to come right out of scripture. <laughs> and um, I think that is, that's what was so powerful about even writing this song with Jason Ingram and Chris Tomlin is because we were, that verse came to life in a way that, again, has always been true and powerful. And as parents, you've always thought about that verse, if you're, especially if you're raised in the church. But part of it is looking out, like recognizing that there's so many things in the world that you cannot control. However, what your family is about and what people experience when they walk into your home and experience you as a person, like you can have a say in that. You can have a say in what virtues you live by and which things like you know, I'm bringing up my kids, but you don't have to be married or have kids to, to, to decide. Like when someone enters my orbit, mm -hmm. I want them to, I want them to feel generosity and kindness and, and like me being present with them. Like when they're talking to me, I don't want them to feel like I'm looking over their shoulder to, to be in the next most interesting conversation. Like I want them to feel like they're, that I'm here, that I'm present. And that song is gosh, it is truly like the parent's prayer. Like if serving, that whole verse re reads, if serving the Lord is undesirable to you, then no one's making you do this. You can organize your life any way you want. Make it, but, you know, as, as for the Barretts, you know, as for us, we, we're going to serve the Lord. We're going to be disciples of Jesus. We are going to, forgive one another and have hard conversations that we don't want to have in order to find reconciliation and honesty and connection. And gosh, I want it, you know, open up every door, write it on every wall, sing it in every room. I want, I want when someone walks into the Barrett house to be like, wow, I just stepped into a place that has like vision and purpose for following Jesus. And, and I would hope, I'd hope that someone would, Feel that those are some those are aspirational right but i would want someone to experience that being around meg and i and, and our kids that's awesome uh, so hey tell me are you good on time do you I'm have great a great on time you're great yeah. on time i'm great on time because i really want to talk about to have and to hold yeah and i'm hope i'm hoping we're good okay so you you just raise the flag when you're like you know when you're running out of time but so christian music especially contemporary christian music has seen in its lifetime some good love songs, right? Uh, this this one on Pat's album is it's a, it tells his story. It also has principles like a marriage conference does in under five minutes. It is moving. It is good. It's not. It is not just a sappy love song for the sake of a sappy love song. I love this song. So I want to know why did you start writing this song? What made you write to have and to hold? We were coming up on our 10 year anniversary and I had, I mean, I started, I started this song in a, 
it was a um i mean it was a long time in writing even songs that people are like oh it kind of just fell out in like 10 minutes like usually <laughs> under the surface it took years of right. like life experiences and all that but we were it was you were already like we're hitting our 10 year anniversary wedding anniversary and you're just looking back over your life and you're also kind of hitting that point in marriage with friendships where you've seen you've you've seen people walk this road and choose to not walk it anymore for plenty of reasons and and this for me was like if i could you know recognizing i'm young i'm only like i'm 10 years it, well, we're 12 years now. So like we're, we'll be hitting our 12 year anniversary, but we, there is so much for us to learn, number one, but marriage is it's a, such a funny thing. If, if you've ever been in a wedding where a pastor's like, who's been married this long and people's hands go up and he keeps going up in number. When someone says they've been married for 50 years, people like cheer because they're like, how did you do it? This is impossible. Like, you know, we just like, don't even know what to do with that. Um, and I think there's like, for Meg and I, the things that we want to model for our kids, we want, we recognize that like the Psalm says, like, as, you know, as arrows to the quiver or like your kids, like we, we realize that the way we're raising them and the things that we're putting in front of them are sharpening them to, to, to go in the, with the trajectory that God has put on their life. And I know in our relationship, it's true for marriage, it's true for any relationship, the easiest way to destroy something is just to neglect it. Don't do anything. You wanna ruin a garden, don't touch it. You want to ruin a house, literally don't touch it. Let time take its toll without any care, without any intentionality. And, you know, for, for me, I just, you know, the line in the song is like, there's plenty of reasons why things grow cold in relationships. Um, but the promise that we made, I want to make that every day. I didn't just make it once. I'm making it today and tomorrow and the next day. And, and I'm showing and our kids are watching. And I want to show them love that's patient and kind and long suffering and doesn't keep a record of wrongs and doesn't, isn't boastful. And like the, the, you know, the Corinthians list, like if I could teach them, like show, not teach them, like show them that if Meg and I could show them that. Wow. What a, what a beautiful picture. And it's something every day you just have to like choose. I mean, the, the lyrics in this song, there's a little bit of sap, right? There's also some real grit to it. When you sing about uh, showing them that you can survive an argument, that you can live through it, that you can come back from some of these things that otherwise really hurt a relationship. It is so good. So good. Thank you. That, your wife that means song. so much. I, well, oh, it matters she, if she likes it. <laughs> no, she, no, she, she loves it. My, it's my daughter's favorite song. Aww on the album she listens to it all the time like literally last night she was listening to it and um when i i mean when i showed it to meg we just both like just wept sure like babies and that was one of the songs for me i was i was so excited um to include because that's like real life mm -hmm. and you know, when you say like, there's some sap to it, there's like, there's like the, the part that's like tender and emotional, but the grit of everyday life is not glamorous and it's not Photoshopped and it's not auto-tuned and it's, it is very, it's intense and life does not cooperate with our plans usually ever. <laughs> and i wanted, I wanted, that song, but also like the album to incorporate that as well. Like I didn't, if I didn't include that would feel like phony or something to me. Well, and that's, I mean, that takes you right into like canvas and clay, these really great reminders and these pictures and things that people can relate to um, a reminder that God is, is forming. It's a process and it's dirty. And, and uh, at some point he completes the work that he started. Right. Yeah. And I, um, 
I know I'm probably the only one that deals with this, right? Where you look at your life and you're like, why am I not further along in these certain areas or whatever? And there, there has just been this, this, um, I'm going to use the word like relief when I started to extend myself the same grace that God extends to me. And I also started to, I've, I have started to trust that, you know, he doesn't do waste and the picture of that song, I've always, I've had this in my mind for like years and years, like no joke, 10 years, just gives you insight in how crazy my brain is. But I, I used to think about what it would have been like for, um, you know, Leonardo, like painting the Mona Lisa and what, if someone would have walked in like halfway through and that thought thinking about that was so powerful because what the scripture tells us is that we are his workmanship and you wouldn't dare go into the middle of an artist creating a masterpiece and say to say like i don't i don't like what you did there i don't like the colors there i don't like the shading i don't like the expression i don't like um you wouldn't do that and how much more should we not do that to our own selves and to other people that God is forming and shaping and using and even using us to help shape other people and them to shape us and, and to know not just God as a father, but God as an artist and a craftsman and a potter. Again, none of those are new thoughts. Those are like very old Bible ideas that for me have like come to life and in really important ways. I think old concepts can be cliche and they can also be fresh. They can, you know, someone can turn a light bulb on with them and they can come alive in a new way. And that's what has happened on a lot of the tracks on this project. There's so many that we could, you know, we could talk forever and ever about morning by morning, lightning, got to listen to lightning. That's amazing. Um, the cherry on top, I think is heavenly which came out at just the right time in the darkest of COVID <laughs> seasons. And then we get this like bright punchy with a music video that like, I just really, I needed something random and fun. And it, that's what it so was. That. Yeah, exactly. That's what I needed like joy again. And mission accomplished. It's been, that song is such a dance party in our house. We love it. It's awesome. It gets stuck in my head really quickly too, very easily sticks in there. So, That's so good, good job time. on that, Pat. Awesome songs on this whole project. Definitely check it out. It's out available now. And um, man, I'm just really enjoying it. So, Hey, thanks for taking a little bit of time and talking with me today. I appreciate hearing the stories and what's on your heart. Thank you for having me for real. Thank you. You're welcome.